So you have to do the contemplation. You have to go deep into it. Deep into it. I'm just pointing out the arenas that you have to look into. And then, of course, the third uh, uh, contemplation has to be done on those who are helping you. You see? Because somewhere the uh, the energy that was in that prior relationship that you had with that person as mother, as child, is still strong. They are naturally predisposed to help you. You see? There, that, that there's something still strong in that, you know, that is going on. And they just help you, you see, from that unconscious karmic level. Many times they don't even know why they like you, as you pointed out, so they, just, they just like you. Just like there's people you meet that you just dislike, there's people who meet you that just like you. You understand? They've never met you uh, uh, before in their life. We've all had met people like that. They, they just click and they start mothering you and fathering you. And you do that with some people because those are those old, strong, common connections. Get up there. But the Master said the truth of the matter is that all of these three kinds of categories of people have been your mother. Those who are helping you now, those who refuse to help you, and those who you just don't even acknowledge on the way. And that the, uh, the, the true view there to inform your relationship with other human beings is out of this realization. Because this realization of the motherhood of all other beings to you in one of your previous births will cause you to come into my heart, will cause you to come into my will cause you to display all those qualities that you're trying to develop in your religious practice. It's interesting. You cannot practice the ways of a Jesus unless you have this mother. That's not possible. There's no such thing as selective love, and compassion. I'm reminded of a beautiful story that is told by one of the uh, masters and uh, he's lecturing on this subject about you know, uh, displaying this loving kindness toward all beings, and he's walking with his disciples, you see, and they come across this beautiful woman. I must have told this story a million times. And the master goes over and says, see this woman, she has been my mother being in the previous birth. And he goes over and gives her a big hug and kisses her, and all the other disciples go over and kiss her. You see what I'm saying? Because she's a good looking woman, right? Yeah, hell yeah, that's my mother being too, right? <laughs> you see? But then the master goes and pick up a pile of shit and there's a maggot in it and it's in the same way. I've been my mother being. Disciples couldn't do that. They wouldn't establish it. <laughs> right? Only one establishing the dream. But you, 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 you have to let this sink down into your being because we've all been taught how to hate. We've been taught to hate those who do not help us, love those who help us, and just don't even consider those who are neither or, or the other. Our whole ambition has been to protect that group of helpers against the enemy group of hurtlers. Hence the basis of all warfare is really good. But if one is concerned about not taking the full advantage of the birth that we have in this Bardo, then one has to march to a much different tune. Because these people, Kiba, who are following these narrow views, are the very ones that are coming back in the lower realm. These are not Buddha. These are not Moses. These are not Jesus. These are not Abrahams, these are not Kabirs, these are not uh, Patahoteps or Kajamis or Christians. These are people who are suffering from the delusion of experience. These are people with no guru, no dharma, no teaching, no insight, no spiritual practice whatsoever. We, I think, would be far better off following these people who have been able to demonstrate that to you in their living, right? So this becomes a very beautiful basis upon which to establish your spiritual practice. 
if you don't care nothing about yourself and your own uh, spiritual destiny, then at least be concerned about the mother beings that you are connected to. Become enlightened for their benefit. Yes, bro. I want to mention an uh, experience I had with uh, some introspection and reflection uh, regarding uh, if I had two days to live. Oh, all right, you did some homework. <laughs> Thank you, homework. brother. <laughs> I did the year and the year thing until I did some trips trying to see some of the spots in the world I wanted to see. But then I did the two days. I got down to the two days. And the messages I got and that process was being compassionate, mm -hmm. uh, having gratitude, and staying uh, steadfast in meditation. So they all became sort of like intangible qualities as opposed to material things. Yes, that was a very interesting homework, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it was a very interesting, and, and when you did it, you probably sat straight up in the bed or you couldn't go to sleep no more. It probably hurled you into a, a trance of enlightenment. I mean, it was a profound insight. And if you can rest in that view, if you can establish that, hold it, don't lose it, don't let it dissipate. You know what I mean? Get it back again and keep getting it back again. Whatever you did to generate that kind of realization, whatever introspection that led to that, keep repeating that until that realization becomes fixed, solid, and that you can now establish yourself in that view. Because by establishing yourself, brother, in that view, you see, you will take full advantage of this. You see, you will, your, your, your karma will, the quality of your karma will be just diamond -like, You see, because you, your, your priority is compassion and love in spiritual practice. You see. And it's very interesting that, isn't this exactly what the mystics say? Isn't this exactly what they have confirmed? Irrespective of time, place, and culture. This is exactly the, the kind of pointing out that they're trying to do through their scripture to us. That this is the, the way to live. From this basis, you see, now you are on the path, as they say. But notice that you can, you had to do that introspection. You see, you really have to do, you have to put in the time though, to establish that view. And then continuously do it until it becomes locked in. It causes you to rearrange your whole priorities in life. I mean, it was interesting when you did the two day out exercise, right? That you really begin to see what is truly important in your life. Because right now, all of us, with no exception, are totally immersed in doing stuff that really ain't even important to you. You're just doing shit. Because you, 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 you know what I mean? You're just doing stuff out of ignorance. Out of ignorance. You, we're living an ignorant-based life. You see? It ain't even important to you. You know it ain't important to nobody else. But you just filling up your, yourself. You're just wasting all this time. You're just filling yourself with all kind of trivia and trying to project onto that trivia some significance. But it has no significance. And deep down inside, you know that. You see. But to break this addiction to trivia, you have to acknowledge the facticity of your death and dying. That's the only thing that can rescue you from trivia. Nothing else can rescue you from your trivia. And it must have been beautiful, brother, as you emerged out of your deep introspection. You, you probably didn't go out and chop for no Cadillac or nothing. You probably just rested in the wisdom of your view, right? You had no, no dire urges to do the laundry, nothing. You just was able to just rest in that wisdom, you see, right? And then, of course, we start filling it back up with trivia. But the point is that you had a taste. You had a satori, you had a glimpse, you had a red box. A, a brief flash insight into how it is. Now this is your Buddha nature, that is your natural state. And that view should exist while awake as well as while sleeping. It should exist while walking, talking, 
all of the activities you're going through should all be occurring from that. So that's a beautiful thing. I I, I encourage you to 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 to, to go on uh, extending the that view, the time frame, so that you never lose it. So when you wake up, you wake up with the view. In fact, there's no time when you're not in the view. Not in the view. Because even in your dream experiences, your primary concern is love, compassion, and meditation. Right? You don't even dream about the stuff that Pam be dreaming about. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> right? We don't have Pam like dreams. <laughs> right. But that is what we have to do. Yes, brother. But when you mentioned, you use the term addiction. Addiction. When you're talking about feeling your life in trivia. Now, is it, is it some uncontrollable desire to do it? Yes. You see what has happened is that we all have established tendencies from all of these prior births. What is it that comes over from one incarnation to the next incarnation? It's not the persona, because that's a one-shot phenomenon. It's not the personality. That's a one-shot phenomenon. It is not the physical body. It's also a one-shot phenomenon. It's none of the contents of your, uh, of your mind, your memory, that's also a one-shot phenomenon. What comes over is the, uh, the impressions that these actions have left on your mind. See, everything that you do with your body and speech makes an impression on the mind in the form of a tendency, what we call a some sky, right? And then now it is these tendencies that carry over. And they manifest in the form of an impulse or an instinct at the mind level in this life. So we all have certain instinctive and impulsive uh, reactions, don't we? That are a history and connected to and a continuum of a pattern that has come over into this life. So, for instance, now we become addicted to trivia. We have spent 10 million lifetimes just in trivia. Now this is a tendency in us. So even when you send them along in the house, you see, you can't, you can't sit still for a minute. You must turn that TV on, you must get that video on, you gotta get a book, you gotta do something. Because the tendency in your mind is to occupy yourself with something. And in most cases, it must be trivial by definition. Can't be deep, right? It must be some trivial activity that you get involved, you see. Because the mind now has picked, has been conditioned right, to pursue trivia, and it becomes addictive, and it's very difficult. This addiction is better seen when we look at and examine the nature of our own emotions, for instance, our emotional style, our reflections of these tendencies. So anger is a tendency. Anger is an is a, is a instinctive reaction that we have to events whenever they don't go our way. It's almost it's instinctive, meaning that it's grooved deep into the mind. Greed is is cut deep into the mind. It is an instinctive reaction. You see, all of these reactions, anger, lust, greed, attachment, and ego, you see, vanity, are rooted in this grasping like nature that is generated into the mind. So it's a very profound thing, but you're onto something very, very real, you see. You look and see your tendencies. Now, for instance, when you just watch kids, we are talking about how one of the things that we need to do at the level of our body in order to discipline it in such a way that we don't generate negative karma is to, to, to practice non-killing, harmlessness, and him. And you will find that some of us, most of us, are born with strong tendencies in that direction. So you find kids. I remember when we were little boys, there was always those little boys. Bilal was one of them little boys, right? And had no problem killing. You could kill an ant, you know, fillet it. You know, they could kill cats, right? Tendency he brought over from his previous life. <laughs> right? You see? And it's strong. They, they take pleasure in it. It doesn't bother them. And then there's some kids that, you know, they can, the sight of blood in, in this world. Those are tendencies. So we all have tendencies. And the further you go back into your birth, this birth, this birth of, in this bondo, the more clearly you can see what your real tendencies are. 
than their natural form. And that gives you much insight, right? Because you can cut through all of the ego mythology, right? And get down to business. So you can say, well, you know, I got this automatic tendency to kill. I got to stay on top of this, right? Or so forth and so forth. We have tendencies to steal. I had a strong tendency to steal. You see, a couple of other 